it's such an established group of veterans, but a lot of younger guys as well. How have you kind of managed the, the spring reps, just knowing what you already have and some of the guys you want to get going? Um, I think, uh, you know, Coach Rule's genius, right, splitting up the teams three ways. They all get about the same amount of reps. So it's not much managing going on. It's just a lot of reps, and those guys just working. You know, the, the young guys, inexperienced guys, you know, you really only get better at football playing football. So it's been good so far. They've been working, you know, you can't hide, so. How does uh, Bly fit in as a portal addition? And I don't know if we've talked to you since you joined. What made you, like, interested in in him as a player, having him here? I was interested in him because he's a really good player. Uh, his size and his speed and his, you know, ability to cover, he, he's a good player. Uh, he fits in, he fit right in. Like, he's a good human, and that room is full of those guys. They, they've been you know, trying to get pretty tight. You know, you need some, you need to be able to gel in the secondary. And we, we're doing a good job with it. They're working at it. So I, I like him. He's a sophomore. He's like 18. He's the same age as all the, any other, other freshmen. So he's been working out pretty well. I know there was sort of a tug of war for Jeremiah for senior <laughs> DB. And, yeah. uh, how, how do you win that one? And, and this, how, what can you see out of him? Or how have you seen him grow this spring so far? I mean, so for a guy who, Barely played football in high school, uh, and you, his athletic traits are well documented. But um, the thing you wouldn't notice about him if you didn't know him is he's very competitive. He's really smart, and he's also really tough. So it's just a natural fit for him at DB. I'm not saying the receivers aren't tough, but it's just a natural fit with him, and um, he's just working at it. Uh, I won the tug of war. I just kept bugging coach. Coach Rue, please let me have him, you know. And um, it's paying off so far. He's got to keep working, but, you know, all the young DBs do. How do you feel about what, what um, Gifford and Marquise Buford and, and Tommy are giving you as far as the guidance, the leadership? Yeah. Leadership well, first, I want to say thank you to my seniors, those guys who are leaving, who left, and they want to, you know, pursue an NFL career. Because really it started with them. You know, when I first got here, they didn't know me. Uh, but those guys just bought in right away, and um, it just set the tone for it. And now Giff, Giff's been in the system for two years now. He knows what we expect, and it's just uphill. Like, we're, we're fine-tuning Giff. Like, when we first got here, we had to do some, some overhaul. But now it's just fine-tuning, you know, just working on his, his coverage ability and all. You know, that's been the focus for him. And guys like Keith and Tommy and Deshaun, those guys – they know what to expect, and um, you can just see it. Like, I, I kind of compare it to, like, when you first move in a house and you wake up in the middle of the night and it's dark and you kind of tiptoe around, but then you stay in the house for a month or two and then you just you know exactly where everything is, so, you know, you move at a better pace. That's where those guys are right now. What does Gifford do particularly well? Everything. Legitimately, Isaac Gifford is one of the best players in the country, and pretty soon you all will see, like, he's a – He's a warrior. He's tough. That's why he's got the single digit. You see him out there, shoulder harness. He does not want to take uh, miss a rep. Uh, he covers well. He's, he, he knows the defense at a high level. He knows offense at a high level. Of course, he tackles well. That's well documented. Even before I got here, he was that. He's just one of those guys, like, it's a coach's dream. Like, everything I ask him to do, he just does it. And then he holds the other guys accountable for not doing it. So I just – that he doesn't have a weakness. Yeah, but you you are fo you see he is focusing on his coverage a little bit, his pass coverage. Yes. Yep. So as a DB, everybody like Tommy Hill is a pretty good cover guy. He's uh -huh. working on the finer details of covering. So we have to cover better because we want to improve on third down. You know, we want to take the ball away more on defense. We didn't do enough. You know, obviously last year was last year, but we want to improve on those things. So. All the DBs are working on coverage. Not not as if it was a, a weakness for Isaac, but that's what he's working on now. How does he go about leading in in your observation? Yeah, whatever the team needs. He's a high level emotional intelligence guy. Um, if 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 he's talking to a young guy and he they need a pep talk, he'll be it'll he he'll be a cheerleader. And if he's talking to the older guys and they need a an enforcer, he, he'll do that too. He's just one of those guys that he makes the room better. He makes the team better. Hey, Dwight Boodle got hurt last year. Yeah. What, what, where is he at right now, kind of in that conversation? So he he picked up where he left off. Um, he, the, the arrow was pointing up for him, and I, I think it is 
right now. You know, he missed a lot of football, so uh, he's got to play the game of football and learn the intricacies of different techniques and defensive calls and all. But I think he's going to be a really good player. And um, I don't see any so any any leftover ailment from his shoulder. So he, he's been doing a good job. As you guys went back and reviewed last season, were there reasons why you didn't get as many takeaways as you thought you could have uh, with the defense you guys played otherwise? Hmm. So when you first, at least in my experience, when you first learn the defense, you spend most of the time trying to remember what to do. And then as the season goes, you know what to do, and now you can focus on what the offense is trying to do. So I can't really do step three and four if I can't fully grasp step one. So they need to know it at a level where they can teach it. And defense is all reactionary, so they need to know it and be able to react within the first blink of the snap. So I think just knowing the defense and um, putting ourselves in the position and also knowing the offense will help us. Exactly. Have you seen it bear out here in spring camp? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Okay, have you seen more takeaways now in spring camp because these guys know the defense? Yeah, yeah, I have. And uh, I've seen more opportunities for takeaways. I've seen more effort for takeaways. I've seen a, a better grasp of the defense as a whole. Particularly with the young guys in your room, what have you mm -hmm. seen from their versatility or their ability to learn all those different secondary spots? I mean, the young guys, they fit right in, you know. Uh, sometimes it's trial by error. Sometimes it's you know, feeding them through a fire hose. Uh, but they just pick up, like Mario Buford. I got him playing three different positions. He just kind of goes out and he does it, and he gives his effort. You know, those young guys, they just fit right in. Again, the leadership from Quentin, the leadership from Phelan, the leadership from Ashton, the leadership from the older guys, right, the, the Omar Browns, you know, it just carries over. And now, you know, Tommy Hills, he's up now. And he knows how to do it because those those guys did it before. Anything else for you? You know, with Marquise now and Mario, the, is there just a quality of play from from the Buford family that you, you've noticed between the two of them? Well, I like those two. I'm not sure how good his father is, but I, I like those two guys. Those guys, they play they play hard. They know football, and they're tough. About they're tough people. You know, I like tough people. That room is tough, so there's nowhere to hide. So it just he kind of fits in. Tony White, Tony White's name got thrown out this offseason. How happy are you, though, that he's coming back for another year and leading this defense? Yeah, I've not known Coach White for very long, but I feel like I've known him my whole life. Like, when you guys talk to him, you can feel it. Like, he's one of those guys. Like, I love being around Coach, and whether he was here or not, I was, I'm, I'm happy. Um, if he could go somewhere and elevate his career and elevate his family and the way he lives, I, I, I'm all for that. But I am relieved that he's here. Um, because I think we accomplished a couple things on defense, but we left a lot on the on the table. So I think we just kind of getting better in year two of the system. It helps. What's the next step for a guy like Hartsog? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what what is what does he need to do off of last season to take that jump? I should I should probably apologize to Malcolm. I put Malcolm in a bunch of sticky situations due to injuries and stuff. And now this spring, I'm just having him focus on one position. I know he can play them all, but I just want him to fine tune the things at one position. And I think, well, not that I think, I've seen him grow in that area. And it's been, been, been fun to watch. You know, he's just comfortable now. Instead of me moving him all over the place like a bad coach, like whatever. But he's been working at it, so I'm happy with his progress. What position? Say that again? What position is he's he? He's a safety. He's playing yeah, he's playing safety now. Yeah, and he, he can flip over and play corner if I needed him to, but it's just good for him to be able to stay in one position and work Why do you out. like him there? Say that again? Why do you like him there? Uh, our field safety is kind of like a nickel in certain positions. There are certain down the distances, and he can do those things. And he's also really smart and tough. He can play in the post. He can play man. He can play in halves. He can blitz. He can do all those things. And on the, in the NFL, teams who play with a nickel, that's kind of like one of the most important pieces, you know, because the nickel, they have to be very versatile, and that's what Malcolm is. Does that reflect also, though, your confidence in the corners that are, that are on, on hand? You know, I try not to project too far out. I think the corners are doing a good job right now, and we'll just keep working at it. Um, it's more of a reflection of my trust in Malcolm to, to hold that position and do what he needs to do. I think the corners will be fine, you know. At this point last year, 
same amount of questions. I was just we just wanted to attack it day to day. So I think that's what we're doing. I do see a difference in knowledge and comfortability and the playmaking ability outside. So it's been good to watch. All right.